he's only 14 and he's driving around going to kill my boyfriend, wants to shit up at school. He says, you're going to kill him, so? Do you think he's going to the high school? Yeah. They're not going to high school, they're going to dinner. Happening now, we are about to learn more details about the moments after a mother called 911 to report her son was on the way to a Richmond school armed with several guns. Now, state police, along with city and school officials, are updating right now the investigation into that December 13th shooting. We continue to follow the story again. A live press are taking place in right. Richmond about what happened three months ago back in December when this young teenager mm -hmm. took his own life inside of that school. Yeah, that mom uh, we reported here less than a week ago came on Channel 13 and she talked about her 14-year-old son going and she was the one that actually notified the school and let the school know that her 14-year-old son was armed with guns headed to that school that day. So today we're going to be learning more. And so let's go to that news conference right now. Uh, you may recall that uh, on the day of the event, December 13th, uh, Superintendent Carter uh, stood out at Dennis Intermediate School and he was asked a number of times, can you tell us what happened? And I'm paraphrasing what he said, but it was along the lines of, there's an important story to tell, but today is not the day to tell it. Well, that's why we are here now, because the time has come to share what happened on that particular day. As I mentioned before, there's still a potential uh, uh, criminal, uh, there's aspects of the criminal investigation still ongoing. Uh, and we are always mindful that there could be an opportunity for civil litigation. So with that, I want to introduce uh, the people that are here with us today. Starting at my far left is the mayor of Richmond, David Snow. Uh, next to him is the chief of Richmond Police Department, uh, Chief Jim Branham. And that next to him is the sheriff of Wayne County, Randy Redder. Next to uh, the sheriff Redder, we have the principal of Dennis Intermediate School, Nicole Vandervoort, and also the Richmond School Corporation Superintendent, Dr. Todd Barrell. A uh, couple of the folks here will be speaking, but all of us will be available for questions if there's something specific to any of, any of them. I'll start by saying that we have a lot to be thankful for on what happened on December 13th. But as we all know, there was a loss of life, and that being of the young man who uh, perpetrated the actions that happened at Dennis Intermediate School. We do know that he had some health challenges, some mental health challenges. We're not going to be addressing those in great specifics. And I also want to, to know that we will not be referring to the suspect by name at any time. We will not be uh, referring to the mother by name at any time, and I want you to understand why. Part of the psychology of people that engage in this kind of criminal activity, especially, especially in adolescence, is the thought and desire that they're going to obtain fame and immortality, that their name will be read in reverence of, for what they did. For us in law enforcement, we don't want to see that happen. And I respectfully ask each of you, when you make your editorial decisions about what you're going to, how you're going to cover this, that you not refer to his name. As to his mother, we're not mentioning her name out of respect for the, the considering all of the uh, tribulations that she has gone through, and especially, especially because of the fact of the decision that she made, a gut-wrenching decision, to pick up the phone and dial 911 and tell law enforcement what she thought was happening. Because I'm here to tell you, with no doubt in my mind, had she not made that call, things would have turned out dramatically different there. Most likely there would have been more loss of life beyond the one loss of life that we already have. We also know that back on December 13th, a lot of questions coming from media and the public were, what kind of weapons did he have? How many weapons did he have? You know, what was his purpose? We couldn't address those things at that time, but we can now, and we want to put to rest some of the, uh, some of the speculation that happened then and then some of the things with social media contributed to about talking about what kind of weapons he did or did not have. What the suspect had with him was a rifle bag. Inside that rifle bag was a Remington 700 bolt action weapon. It fires a 223 round 
and it has an internal five round magazine. So it was not a, uh, it was not a magazine fed weapon that would hold 20 or 30 or 40 rounds. Uh, this particular day, uh, besides the rifle, he also had with him a Smith & Wesson 45 caliber pistol. He had two magazines capable of holding seven rounds. In fact, both magazines were loaded with five rounds. One magazine had been inserted into the weapon and the weapon had been charged, meaning one, one round was in the bullet, uh, was, one round was in the chamber. Also in the bag, there were two plastic 12 ounce water bottles filled with gasoline. There were a couple of rags that we believe were the intentions to use as fuses to make makeshift Molotov cocktails. He had a 12 ounce can of Mountain Dew and his handwritten plan of action for what he wanted to do once in the school. To the timeline, and I'll have the, uh, the monitor up here to speak to those points, everything really initiated with the phone call to 911. And as you can see up on the screen, between 815 and 816, right at that time point, 911 received calls from the suspect's mother that the suspect's uh, boyfriend had been taken hostage by the suspect and that there was a threat to a school. It wasn't specifically said what the school was. Richmond, uh, Richmond police put out a dispatch to be on the lookout for, a sus for the suspect vehicle. Then at 817, information is developed that leads uh, law enforcement to believe that Dennis Intermediate School is the school that's going to be threatened. At 8, 818, Richmond Dispatch advises that Richmond Community School Resource Officers have been advised of the situation and of the threat. Over the next several minutes, they initiate uh, protocols for security of Dennis Intermediate and other schools. At 819, Richmond Police call out additional units from headquarters. They are responding not only to Dennis Intermediate, but they're also responding to other Richmond Community Schools. At 820, officers are sent to the suspect's home as well. They want to check to see if there's any other threat there and to assess what specifically is happening at the suspect's home. We get to the point of around 822 to 823, the suspect who has been driven to the school by, by the suspect's mother's boyfriend, they arrive at school, but law enforcement has also been arriving at the same time. The suspect sees the law enforcement, he runs to the door, and he uses the 45 caliber pistol and fires three shots into the glass door, knocking out the glass, making entry into the school. Then at 828, officers advise that the suspect is shooting at them from a stairwell in the school. During this time, the principal, Nicole Vandervoort, sitting to my left, she is in a secure area where she is monitoring the uh, school security cameras. She is feeding live, direct information to the dispatch, and that information is being transferred to officers that are on the scene. There is a time when the suspect is on a stairwell where he can no longer maneuver. Officers are in the stairwell directly below him, so they're just separated by the, by the upper deck level of the stairwell and the stairs coming down. Had Nicole not been there to translate the, uh, that information of where he was, more than likely one or more of those officers would have either been injured by gunfire or killed by gunfire. So I say it with uh, no trepidation in my voice that without the actions that Nicole took, uh, we could have had a, a dead police officer in addition to the suspect being killed. Eventually, the suspect fires two more rounds out of his 45 caliber pistol. If you recall, I said that he had another magazine. He did not reload the pistol. He then went to his bolt-action rifle, uh, which has a, an internal uh, five-count magazine. From what we've seen, it appears that he is loading his rounds one at a time. He fires a total of seven rounds while in the stairwell. The seventh and final round is the one that he uh, used to take his own life. And the autopsy ultimately determines that that was the single uh, 
gunshot wound to him, and he suffered no other injuries. And though law enforcement had returned fire at him while he was in the stairwell through the doors, he was not hit by any law enforcement gunfire. So that gives you the time. Again, here's what we've learned uh, in this news conference there coming out of this December school shooting in Richmond, Indiana. We learned today, again, the suspect's mother was credited with stopping that shooting that day. In fact, the officer just mentioned there, Captain Burstyn, saying that had it not been for the mother making that gut-wrenching decision to right. call police, that the incident could have turned out differently, that there could have been more casualties outside of the suspect himself. Yeah, we also learned uh, today that the uh, teen suspect, who was 14, had a rifle, also a pistol. He was inside of a staircase uh, shooting out. He shot himself into the school and then was firing outside at officers. And there was a principal who was in there feeding real-time information to dispatch, and that likely saved the lives of police officers. Absolutely. And also the suspect ended up in that stairwell. Police did know its location, again, right. thanks to that principal who gave that heart-wrenching information as it was taking place in real time. Now, that suspect fired again seven times in that stairwell, then taking his own wow. life. We're going to be uh, continuing this news conference over on WTHR.com, our Facebook page. So if you'd like to watch that, that's where you can see it. But we have some other breaking news right now. And we'll, of course, continue to follow this mm -hmm. and have more for you tonight at 530 as well.